story. President Biden took a break from being loved by every American who isn't racist to ban most travel to the U.S. from India to limit the spread of COVID starting today. India, first put on the map by helping a white woman find spirituality and eat, pray, love, accounts for more than 40% of new worldwide cases, which have doubled since the beginning of March. How could we have known? Once U.S. vaccinations hit 27%, it would have been irresponsible for the media to not shift attention to Meghan Markle going knives out on her in-laws. Congressman. Some accuse America of neglecting other countries, but we did our best to send them old clips of Dr. Fauci showing the ladies of The View how to wipe down a box of Cheerios. Back me up on this. <laughs> well, I'm sure we sent a lot of great clips of Fauci, but the bigger problem is that uh, uh, Prime Minister Modi is, is just an Indian version of Donald Trump. And, uh, you know, it's his lack of leadership that really has caused every this horrific situation in India. And we really uh, despite that, we need to be doing our best. And let me guess, this is our fault because we could have waived intellectual property laws and allowed India to create their own vaccine, which would have prevented this spread entirely. No, that's exactly right. Ryan, that's I'm literally right. not in the mood right now. <laughs> I'm not in the mood right. right now, Congressman. Sure, it feels like the whole world is in a car flying over a cliff, but it's kind of fun to see all the M&Ms and parking meter quarters and half-chewed Benadryl tablets floating around in the air. Yes, I love M&Ms, but one makes me so full. Now, moving on. In the first civil rights crisis of the Biden presidency, MSNBC's Stephanie Rule sounded the alarm that Democrats are in danger of losing the minority of voters who are basically her. In a now-deleted tweet, she wrote, a couple earning 500k will have taxes raised. I am not disputing that is a lot of money, but especially in high-tax blue states, those folks definitely don't consider themselves rich. And even if it is a lot richer than the poor, those voters don't see it that way. Speak for the voiceless queen. To be a Democrat, you gotta respect all families, including the wealthy couple with a rat kid going to NYU. Now, Congressman, you are obviously crazy rich because you're in Congress, plus you served in Iraq where, if I have it right, you had free reign to steal Saddam Hussein's gold. Is Biden's tax plan leaving behind absolute Arizona kings like you? Yeah, it's going to be very difficult for me to get my morning latte if this uh, passes. But uh, look, at the end of the Aww. day, a family making $500,000 is not poor. Uh, you know, maybe you have to make uh, some decisions, but it's easier than the decision that a uh, you know working class family has to make. So I am sorry that uh, you know our our rich you know congressmen friends that make more than five hundred thousand dollars are going to have to. Uh, maybe, you know, get get a, a less expensive car next time around. One might ask, why even vote Democrat if you're just going to balk the second a president tries to bolster the middle class? But one might also want to keep his cush job on this show. So, slay, Steph. Slay, queen. Good job, Brian. Now, next up, our nation's leaders of hollow moral grandstanding are under attack. Check out what happened to Mitt Romney at the Utah GOP convention. Warning, anyone else who interrupted a memorial for a classmate who died of stomach cancer with a monologue from Wicked may find this response triggering. Now, you know me as a person who, uh, who says what he thinks, and I don't hide the fact that I wasn't a fan of our last president's character issues. And I'm also no fan. Aren't you embarrassed? We Stan, a denigrated daddy who knows how to shakily redirect his own humiliation. But even nepotism-backed militarized girl bosses aren't immune to the criticism. Congresswoman Liz Cheney has been flexing her semantic-only Trump hate, and according to Axios, top Republicans are turning on Congresswoman Liz Cheney. She could be ousted from her GOP post within a month. Well, no surprise here. When a woman wants to put up a cynical facade of decency, she gets critiqued for her appearance. And also when Mitt Romney does it. Now, Congressman, without leaders like Romney and Cheney, who would show Americans that taking a strong public stance against one evil thing allows you to keep supporting literally every other evil thing undisturbed? It's a, it's a good question. I mean, uh, I, I love my uh, my colleagues across the aisle, but just because you have this decency to be patriotic and stand up for a real elections and integrity uh, doesn't give you an excuse you know, for you to you know wage uh, you know uh, endless wars, cut health care, uh, you know, try to cut Social Security, Medicare, all these other things, you know, stop people from reuniting with their families. So uh, I'm glad they're, they're finding at least their souls in one regard, but they really need to keep moving forward and, and uh, joining us in, in other regards. I don't know. I think Romney's epic clapback is going to set off waves of soul searching and party and respection. I wouldn't be surprised if Romney's hosting Rush Limbaugh's old show tomorrow. Moving on. The first woman two-term president from our shared alternate universe, Hillary Clinton, brought a woman's war hawk perspective to Biden's withdrawal from Afghanistan, arguing that the 20-year conflict just needs more nurturing. It's one thing to pull out troops that have been, you know, supporting security in Afghanistan, supporting the Afghan military, 
leaving it pretty much to fend for itself. Uh, but we can't afford to walk away from the consequences of that decision. Exactly. We can't afford to walk away, but maybe we can afford to stay forever since there are no costs or downsides. Congressman, why is it baller to stay in Afghanistan? Because <laughs> it's not baller at all. We need to get out of Afghanistan. We've been there for 20 years. Uh, I, I don't know what we're going to do for the next 20 years. We're going to do the last 20 years. Uh, you know, we're not going to fix it. And we need to basically start focusing on the real problems of the world. And I'm not going to be responsible for telling you know, another mother or, or father that, you know, their son or daughter was the last person that died in Afghanistan because we couldn't make a decision. Right. But it's also not really about you, Congressman. I have to say, it's still so inspiring to see the example Hillary sets to little girls everywhere who know that they too can follow their own hubris into a quagmire, dissemble their own way out of accepting responsibility, and not even support a pause in the bloodletting. I like how Hillary Clinton picks her spots for only the most important of issues, defending her own shitty decisions. Thank <laughs> you.